Why would you make this? Hello, everyone. Welcome and thank you for listening. This is Why Would You Make This Season 3, The Asylum Years, the only podcast to expect the worst and is still shocked enough to ask the question, why would you make this? I am Jimmy Time. I'm joined by my co-host, Brother Skylar. Are you here? Yes, I'm back. Oh. I have returned. Sorry about last time. Yeah. It was the first time I have witnessed Disco Inferno in a long time. I became viciously <laughs> ill. I couldn't make it. <laughs> Uh, what'd you get? Two kidney transplants, right? Just yes. to deal with having to see him again. <laughs> and I got a backup one just in case it happens oh, again because I know he's booked. Again. Right. Yes. Yeah. I noticed there's also a dialysis machine, <laughs> dialysis machine here, despite the fact that you have two healthy kidneys. Oh, excuse me, three. Yes, a backup one too. Thank you for making space. Yes. We also joined by Jade by J Delta Guaguan. 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 I noticed you're missing a kidney today. Where did it go? Oh well, funny thing. I woke up in a bathtub. A little ice. Right. And uh, an IOU, but it wasn't signed. So, <laughs> you know, we'll have to figure out who the culprit oh, of that is. That's what I forgot to do. <laughs> Unrelated. I wonder if it's just like a like an open-ended IOU. You can hand it to anybody anywhere. And they'll just be like, ah! Oh, I didn't think of that. It's like the race card. <laughs> Second you hand it to somebody, it's like, nope, that's it. I played it. You accepted it. Race card. Is that a real yeah, card? But <laughs> Yeah. You yeah never... All right. But then I owe them. Why would I just say I owe you for doing nothing? Because <laughs> uh, it's uh, you pay them, and then you just bounce, and they don't know you. So I pay them. Yeah, with the I- IOU. Oh, okay. And you pay them in IOU. In IOU. All but right. then they don't know you. They can't reclaim it, so they just pass it along okay. to the next. A true trickle down. A kind of like a trickle left economy. <laughs> It's like a draft economy. You know, that's when everyone gets drafted into the army and we make money off of that. You know what? Let's move on. Let's move on. During season three, we are taking you through National Wrestling Alliance total nonstop action weekly pay-per-view shows now known as the Asylum Years. This is episode seven live from Nashville, Tennessee in the Fairgrounds Coliseum drawing an undisclosed amount of people. But I saw the show. It couldn't have been more than 500. No, like 300 at best. Ooh, at best. Yikes. Yeah. Okay, all right, well. There was no one on that hard cam side. So. Well, yeah, we don't see the hard cam side There's at no all, and you know it's empty. Okay. Jeff Jarrett recently revealed on My World with Jeff Jarrett, a podcast hosted by Conrad Thompson, that... At this time, the TNA company had just over $100,000 in the bank to operate with for the rest of the year. Oh! Yeah. What month is it? Nice. July. Oh! In the end of July, I'm going to August. (laughs) I mean, when you start a new business, you're going to start out a little in the red, but... Uh, All right, I didn't actually write the date. Yeah, it's July 31st, I believe. So yeah, it is the end. They have to figure this out now. Yeah, yeah, when I was saying before about how they're like $2 million in the red, that was collectively the whole company was worth like $2 million less than what they thought they were worth. Mm. They have some money. Jarrett's made a little bit of money. The who I forget whoever they are, like um, Health Emblem, whatever, the, their, their backing company. They made a little bit of money, but it's clear that the, that's no, 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 no. Yeah. And I believe, if I didn't say it last episode, then maybe this is the episode... No, last episode was the first one in the new arena, right? Yeah. Yeah, so that was the one where their backers were like, yo, this is... uh, Tone it down. We might have to back away from this. So the last episode, Pay-Per-View 6, may have been a little better organized than the previous ones, but we were still definitely left confused about the motives of the characters and the direction of the company. So let's go ahead and talk about how it is we got to this moment in time with our crazy past. <laughs> like a prospect of their our crazy past. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute. What happened that got you so crazy? So first in the unranked division, the original Midget Killer Puppet the Psycho Dwarf wants to start the show with Midget Wrestling, but has since settled for making Midgets bleed because they're stealing his screen time. I should really clarify that by saying he's making Midget Wrestlers bleed, because that's okay anyway. Uh, However, sometimes he doesn't really care about that because he's tired. He's just tired. (laughs) I'm going to go take a little nap. He's always beating off in garbage cans everywhere. That's true. Why? 
Next, Alicia keeps demanding money from men, but sometimes they're not upset about it. I want to know what's happening with that so bad. Yeah. Good, well, good for they you. didn't do it last week, right? Uh, we have not heard anything like, about this since the fourth <sighs> show. But then they were now on the seventh show, so it's been a couple of weeks, yeah. Next, after failing to achieve athlete status <laughs> and failing to remove athlete status from NASCAR, K Crush has changed his name to The Truth, claiming star status, and he has begun using his belt to hang people who disagree with his preachings of conspiracy. Tables have turned there. He's doing the hanging. Whoa, what? Is who that was, not what he's going for? Who was hanging him? Well, that's what he's... Is that not... Is that just me? Nobody? I didn't... No? Okay. I'll tell you what, let's move on here. Taylor Vaughn is Miss TNA. However, other women have been booked more than she is. Wait, who? Taylor, we haven't heard from her since the third show, so... Or I think third. It was, I think it was the fourth show, actually. <laughs> Whatever, moving on. Ed Ferrara keeps touching Francine's boob, sometimes because she makes him. Regardless, Francine keeps beating him with her belt. However, after being attacked by the Blue Meanie, Ed showed genuine concern for Francine. Or maybe he was just trying to look down a bra, you know, 50-50. <laughs> uh, I know I'm paying $10 just to see that storyline again. <laughs> I am demanding a $10 refund. <laughs> so you don't have to see it. Yeah. Next, on the third show, Buff Bagwell has gone home to rethink his career and he has yet to return. And then finally, in the unranked division, the Disco Inferno has promised to teach the NWA TNA with his new show, Jive Talking. Mm. Right? I'm becoming yeah. ill again. I, yeah. I didn't even eat, like, just any ch I didn't eat any chicken at all. None. <laughs> Let alone a specific brand that does a certain thing. So next, in the tag division, low-class redneck stereotypes, the Dups, have possibly alienated themselves from the company as they struggle to find willing opponents. If they disappeared for no reason at all suddenly, I wouldn't care. No. Okay. <laughs> next, who beat Cowboy James Storm and Wildcat Chris Harris to a bloody pulp on the third show? The answer? The Hot Shots. But we don't know why. <laughs> Finally, in the tag division is... AJ Styles a glory hog, or is Jerry Lynn a disrespectful pervert, or <laughs> are they just two co-workers having a simple disagreement? You know those simple disagreements where you grab your co-worker by the face while you're talking right. to them? Right, One of those. And then later on, you throw him into a wall, after which he leaps over a table at you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Normal, simple friend stuff. The only... Storyline going on in the X Division is that the Flying Elvises are the X Division, oh. even if they have to take it by force. But also, maybe that just applies to Sonny Siaki, because he doesn't really seem to care about the other guys. <laughs> yeah. And then last, the World Division, Brian Christopher has dropped his name and his hip-hop gimmick to be known as Brian Lawler, a name chosen to distinguish himself from his father, Jerry Lawler. Or maybe he hasn't. Or maybe he's insane because he's been doing a lot of like weird laughing and dancing. And I don't know what he's going for right now. Paycheck. Yes. Why, Solid. He, why wouldn't he just call himself like grandmaster? Like, I don't. Whatever. I mean, if you just the grandmaster, then it's like, well, it's sort of like a KKK thing. Yeah. That's, that's a oh, little... that's a thing. Oh, no, I'm that's sorry. the grand wizard. Oh, that's a grand wizard. Yeah, yeah I guess Grandmaster's the... oh, fine. Okay. Ruining the name of wizards everywhere. Because <laughs> they were doing real well before that thing. Monty Brown. This is the next thing. Monty Brown wants Ken Shamrock's NWA title, and Shamrock has responded saying, make it official and you're on. But after four weeks, Monty Brown is now focused on K-Crush and Elix Skipper. Or, excuse me, the truth and Elix Skipper. Well, he screwed him over, and now he's got to get even. Yes, yeah, so I don't... Like, I don't know if he's not going for the world title, but he's definitely distracted now. Like, Mr. Fight is busy right now. Is he? Where is he? Oh, I guess he's busy then. Yeah, that's a good <laughs> point. If he's not here, he must be busy. Next, James Mitchell wants to control the NWA heavyweight title as per the request of his god, who may or may not be himself, which also may actually be literal physical control of the title rather than having, like, the legal title of champion. But also, despite that, 
being a possibility, apparently, blood is way more important than control. <laughs> and I want to point out that I wrote that before watching this episode. <laughs> Next, Scott Hall was put on and then chair-shotted off of a stretcher by Brian Lawler, K-Crush, and Jeff Jarrett, so Hall has promised to take them all out one by one, but he was put on and then chair-shotted off a stretcher again. <laughs> it's just not working for him. And then finally, Jeff Jarrett will not be screwed over again like he already has been by... Brace yourselves here. Jackie Fargo, Toby Keith, Scott Hall, NWA President Jim Miller, NWA Vice President Bill Barons twice. Oh! James Mitchell and the New Church, and the Tennessee Titans. <laughs> also, maybe, allegedly, he might have tried to murder Jackie Fargo, Jim Miller, Bill Barons, twice, <laughs> Scott Hall, twice, and the entire NWA security team. So, you know, once again, conspiracy victim, unhinged madman, fine line in the TNA division. No. All right, right before we start the show, let's get it out of the way. Dark matches, because we got some this time. First off, Matt Stryker, that's with a Y. Wait. Matt Stryker with a Y, the other Matt Stryker, not the WWE one, the ROH one. Oh, not the teacher. Mm. No, not him. The ROH one? Yes. The one whose penis you haven't seen. Oh, was that just me? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Stryker. <laughs> Matt Stryker beat BJ Whitmer. Who is now an agent for AEW. Oh, okay. So yeah. he's, he's a pretty good guy. Pretty famous back in the day. And then the other dark match was NWA Junior Heavyweight Champion Jimmy Rave pinned Shark Boy. You know who both of those people are. Why was that a dark match? Because the company's still new and dumb. <laughs> yeah. What? Why was this a dark match? And didn't Jimmy Rave just lose his arm? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Recently? Like, like yeah, right, yeah, recently. Yeah, like, 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 like super, like, within the last six months. Yeah. What happened? Uh, what's it called? Where a shark? No, you get an infection, and then uh oh, oh. yeah, I I think it was uh that thing everybody gets staff, staff infection. Staff, I'm pretty sure it was staff infection. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Happens rest in, quick. Yeah, rest that in, shit happen. Rest in peace. Well, his career and his oh. arm. Rest in peace, rest Jimmy in... Rave's arm. <laughs> I gotta make a graphic for that now. Well, I'll remember you. <laughs> All right, let's just start the show. You're not going to sing us in this time? There it is. All right, the show opens. Yeah. Right? What was that? <laughs> what the hell? I thought it was just me. <laughs> Today welcomes us to the NWA TNA. Talking over Jeremy Borash is announcing, so you can't hear either of them. X Division title match. Primetime Elix Skipper versus AJ Styles with Jerry Lynn in his corner. Although not in his corner because Jerry Lynn's on commentary. Uh, which, of course, means we can't hear what he's saying because that's how commentary works in this company. <laughs> the match starts with AJ in control as Lynn explains that he and AJ have ironed out their differences. As the match continues, I am presented with a kayfabe question. Ooh. When a wrestler does the corner jump, the old up and over, mm -hmm. why does the other wrestler just automatically run under him? Like, what is he going for there? Uh, I, I think the idea of that is you've got too much momentum to stop, so you're just ducking under so you don't catch the legs to the face or anything. Right? I you're guess. you're chasing him to follow up and give him a, a bing or a bang or a boom or okay. something, and he goes up and over, and you're like, oh, no, whoop, and I dip guess. under. I don't know, man. I just feel like... Wait. <laughs> just wait a second. Yeah, so, sometimes they do. Just wait a second. Usually All right, whatever, fine. Yeah. So Skipper turns around and shouts, What time is it? <laughs> Total time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the crowd is mixed with their response. The crowd pops for AJ's super kick, and I'm glad because almost everybody on the roster does one. Yeah. You're going to see it a lot, so I hope you love it. So Skipper hits a corner springboard leg drop and shouts, what time is it? The crowd's still about three-fourths in his favor this time, so I guess it's getting better. <laughs> also, two-fourths. <laughs> it's still two time. It's always two-fourths. Halfway through, the crowd is still into it, but they're starting to lose them as Skipper and AJ exchange submissions. A missed leg drop by AJ does not matter because AJ sends Skipper to the outside and follows him. 
But that does not matter because then Skipper goes back inside and then hits AJ with a plancha. So it's just X Division Wrestling. This is what it is. You can't, yeah. you can't complain. This is what it is. Inside the ring, Skipper goes for a springboard, but AJ kicks his legs, which sets up the spiral tap. AJ wins and retains the X title. Lynn and Styles high five as they leave together. Match length, 20 minutes and 40 seconds. Full segment length, 15 minutes. What about five seconds cut off at the end? Thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I wasn't crazy about this match. Like, it, it, it seemed like they were both a little all over the place. Yeah, that's what I felt like, too. Um, yeah. It's weird, because it, it felt like they were both rushing through everything and totally lost at some point. And w- they go for the same spot three times, almost in a row. Oh, yeah? Yeah, it, like, uh, AJ kicks, yeah. Elix grabs the foot, and then it's whatever it is. They oh. go for it once, another... Oh, okay. botch yeah, it yeah, yeah. go for it again and then like uh oh, it for god's sakes if you botch it and you're gonna do it again don't do it immediately after yes uh and there's a point in the match where you said they're exchanging submissions right i think it was during that exchange elix actually gets a count and breaks a three count to lock in a submission and the crowd literally goes Oh, yeah, he <laughs> tried to do a quick roll up, but it didn't work. So it just looked like he was pinning. Yeah. But he was like, no, I have to go for this submission. Yeah. So it made no sense. And, yeah. Woo. Credit to Elix for murdering himself on that bump off the top. He, uh, at the end, he goes, jumps, goes for the springboard. AJ misses the kick to the back. Yes. Elix just, boom, right on the back of his head and oh. dies. And then AJ hits that spiral tap. Fucking ass. A hundred percent on the chest. Yeah. Woo. Man, props to Elix then. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I, I felt like the same thing you said applies for me. Um, there was no real story around anything, yeah. and it was just spot, 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 and in between everything, nothing happened. It was just like a rustle around, maybe a punch or slow, kind of awkward, and then we get to the spot, and they go and do it real quick. Yeah. And then they don't have anything in between, and it just felt it was lacking so much. Yeah. 100%. And, I don't know if you caught this, but on commentary, to mm-hmm. go back to the question you said before, yeah. is Jerry Lynn a pervert? Yeah. <laughs> he did a move, and his response to AJ hitting that ridiculous move was, yeah. it's just one of those moves that fall out of your underwear in desperation. <laughs> <laughs> Yo! That is the most incriminating Freudian slip I have ever heard! I can't believe I missed it. <laughs> Oh my god. Hey, you know how it is, guys. Sometimes you're wrestling a match and your dick falls out. <laughs> you just get in there with those boys and it happens. Now, nah, baby, it's okay. We're wrestling. <laughs> We're in a movie out. theater. <laughs> like, I can't believe how much I'm just joking around with these storylines. And then consistently, they prove my jokes correct. <laughs> All right, segment two, we get welcome to the show. Tanae welcomes us and lets us know that 24 hours after last week's show, Steamboat called Shamrock and Malice into his office and gave Shamrock the title back, uh, because I don't, we didn't mention it yet, which is that last week there was a te- ladder match mm. without Malice in it, and he came out and just took the title and left. He was like, it's mine now, bye. And we were yeah. like, I guess the show's over. Yeah. <laughs> So Ed mentions that Jarrett was invited to the meeting, but he doesn't jump when he's told to jump. Tanae says Scott Hall requested that Jeff Jarrett's suspension be lifted for the match tonight, and Steamboat agreed. The alpha male Monty Brown enters to confront Elix Skipper for turning on him last week. Skipper, who is still ringside from selling for the last match. <laughs> Yo, Ely yeah. Skipper has the most on-screen time of anyone on this show. Yes. He possibly, just stays in the ring. Possibly in TNA history. <laughs> yes. Yes. He's there for the first, like, literally 25 to 30 yeah. minutes of the show. Uh, Skipper surprisingly gets the upper hand inside the ring, but it's only for a second. Then Monty Brown hits the Gorilla Press into a fallaway slam, and music plays him off, but he's not done, and he hits the Alpha Bomb. Mm-hmm. Now he's done. Yeah. Full segment length, 4 minutes, 55 seconds. Uh, my thoughts are, I'm a little confused about this, because I really thought he should be getting revenge on the truth more than Skipper. Like, I wasn't convinced that Skipper really set him up. He's not in the ring yet. 
Well, all the truth. He, yeah, he's looking around for them. He's like, "Oh, I see him in the ring. Let me go get him first. But, I'm just in general. Like, I didn't, I didn't feel like, like, if I was in that situation, I don't know. I'd have been like, I don't know. I mean, maybe Skipper's a jerk, but he didn't set me up. Yeah, he served him up on a platter. I don't know. Just the way the language is being presented, it makes to me it makes it sound like Skipper and the truth talked backstage and we're like, here's yeah. the plan. Oh, see, I didn't get it that. Yeah, I, that's I got it from what I got. From, what I got it from was Skipper was just like. Well, I'm not his tag partner. That was just for the match. So see ya. No, it, they were talking about how he set him up. Yeah, that's what commentary. Well, they was say a lot of things well, that are not true. Another, so yeah, okay, you got me there. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I love Monty Brown. Yeah, that's what was your only thoughts for that. I love Monty Brown. I mean, so he, much. he's blaming Elix, and you got to think of it like a crime boss, right? Like our truth is the big bad right now. <laughs> okay, but you start with. All right, this guy crossed me, so I'm just all I'm gonna do is beat him down and alpha bomb him, and then out, then let Truth see that okay. so he knows what's coming for him. There oh, okay. And then the only other thought I have, which is that uh, no, brother Skyler, even with the better version, I cannot tell what Ed Ferrara is wearing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's a silky scarf, but other than that, it looks like someone painted on top of a yellow drop cloth, and he decided to wear it. <laughs> that sounds accurate. Yeah, and then uh, Don West is just back to his old, regular, silky long sleeve. Yep. Looking snazzy. Whatever was under that pinstripe jacket, that red pinstripe jacket, right. that's what he was wearing sure. under it. Yeah. It's yeah. the same stuff he's wearing every week. And today he's wearing the same suit that he wears every day. Telling you. That he will continue to wear until the day he dies. It's his skin. <laughs> Sprays it on? He's naked. <laughs> oh my god. The bow tie is his genitals. All right. Let's what? <laughs> Segment three. Back at the desk. Today talks up the Scott Hall Jeff Jarrett match, and out comes Jeff Jarrett. Jeff Jarrett enters with a writhing burlap sack over his shoulder. In the ring, Jarrett says that Shamrock won't be here tonight and that Steamboat hasn't arrived, so he's going to entertain himself and the crowd. Jarrett mentions all the stuff that Tanae had said about the belt and the on. Uh, and then also that Jarrett is going to have to work his way back from the bottom to the top of the title standings. Mm. So Jarrett agrees and says that he's going to start by crippling a midget on live pay-per-view. Inside the sack is a tied-up Todd Stone. Jarrett manhandles Stone around the ring, and then he gives Todd Stone the stroke, and he says, I just had a mini-stroke! Which wasn't rendezvous to the commentary team, because they made that joke before he oh, made the joke. So th stole his thunder. Yep. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Enter Puppet, and Jarrett says... Puppet, you short your little stinking sawed off ass. <laughs> Wait, what? Yeah. Say that one more time for me. Puppet, you short your stinking little sawed off ass. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Jarrett also says that tonight he's the dwarf destroyer. Let's go, me and you. Oh my God. <laughs> Puppet says, okay, but let's even things up. And he pulls out a gun. Yeah. Whoa! I spit hate. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. Security enters the ring and Puppet threatens to shoot off everyone's kneecaps. <laughs> yeah. I love how Puppet pulls out the gun and the crowd just gets quiet. No! They were unfazed. Yeah. They are like, yep, this is what happens. He's pissed off. He pulled out a gun. Oh, I thought it was like a quiet hush. Like, a, oh, I really hope this is part of the show. <laughs> I, I really looked like nobody cared. <laughs> <laughs> I can definitely say that nobody moved. Like, yeah. whether it was due to lack of reaction, due to fear, or, or because they're like, I'm not believing this. A little guy with a little gun, I'm not scared. Like, <laughs> that looked like a big gun in his hand. <laughs> so, Jarrett <laughs> blasts Puppet with a chair. I don't know how he sneaks up He's on him. He's a hero. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess, yeah. Oh, but also, he blasts Elon Skipper with a chair, who's also still out there selling. <laughs> okay, well, Why is he in the ring? Before. Yeah. Well, he's not in the ring anymore. He's out now yeah, after that, getting blasted. That got him out. Tanae claims that Jarrett is on a maniacal rampage as he beats down Puppet, uh, the guy who just pulled out a gun in public, as you said. <laughs> She's a hero. Then, like the fucking Justice League, the NWA authority appear on the ramp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, Bullet Bob Armstrong, and Don Harris. I fucking love 
his line. I, it is in my soul. I love it so much. Which is Steamboat goes, it all ends now for you, pretty boy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> pretty boy. I died. I loved it. I kind of hate how commentary reacts to it as they're watching the monitors. So they're up there on the entrance ramp, and they're like, hey, Jarrett. And he's like, all on commentary, he's like, what's this? What's going on? And then they appear like, whoa, look who's here. <laughs> like, they just appeared. <laughs> Oh. So Steamboat says, Jarrett, you got suspended. Let's do this the easy way or the hard way. Which pause right there, because we already said his suspension was lifted for the night. Yeah. He's allowed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> and why are they not doing anything about the guy who just pulled out a gun? <laughs> did he just like scurry away? <laughs> what crime did he commit? <laughs> I mean, this is America, right? Yeah. He didn't point it at anyone. That's true. He was up the whole time. Yeah, he pointed at everybody. So... Oh, he did it at one point when they got in the ring. You can't arrest me for threatening to kill everyone, can you? Oh, wait, that's the other way around. You can't arrest everybody for threatening to kill one. That's... <laughs> Darn! So Jarrett says, let's do this the old-fashioned way and fight. I win title shot. I lose. I'm suspended. Steamboat asks the crowd about what he what do you think crowd the crowd's like ah. <laughs> what was that what did you say what was the last what, time you had a match you... Steamboat <laughs> Steamboat gets in the ring and does his karate 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 yeah. Ka -ka -ka. karate thought it's gonna fall over but Scott Hall sneaks up behind Jarrett and smacks him out of the ring. <gasps> Boo! Oh wait, no, no, he's no, oh, but that's a heel tactic. No, but that's a face tactic tonight. Oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Paul gets an old stretcher out from under the ring and says his catchphrases and says he's putting Jarrett on a stretcher after their match, which at this point is also kind of a catchphrase because he's said it like three times now. And when, when you say old stretcher, oh, yeah. <laughs> make sure you mean a stretcher from the mid 1800s where yes. it's just two dowel rods with a piece of cloth. Yo, in between. it is like at best, it is a World War II surplus. <laughs> Yo. It's World War One. Oh, one, you're going one with that? Yeah, I'm going, I'm going Spanish-American. <laughs> wow. I, I'm not sure when the army got green dye. Oh. That's what it is, because he was green. <laughs> All right, so full segment length, eight minutes and 38 seconds. Uh, do you have any thoughts about this? I don't think it was clear what kind of match he was setting up for. It was implied, but it was never he, made he clear. Was, he was like, I'm going to put you on a stretcher in the end of our match. That's why we're having a match tonight. And I was like, oh, so it's just the singles match. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was really expecting to be like, it's a stretcher match or something like they that. They never. He was no. like, spoiler alert, they literally never announced There's that. There's no graphic. Never. Nope. Yeah. So it didn't work for me. Yeah. My thoughts about this, I really felt like commentary gave away everything right before it happened. Yeah. Literally every part of the segment, commentary said it, and then it happened on the screen, and you're yeah. like, well, why are you guys out here? This commentary team is, I, I can't help but think, like, shut the fuck up. Stop talking. Why are you guys talking so much? Oh, my God. Yes. Yes. Segment four, Goldie is interviewing Sonny Siaki about his match with Lords of the New Church member slash. Siaki lays down the rules. Don't look at Sonny Siaki. Don't touch Sonny Siaki. And don't think about Sonny Siaki. Well, don't have dirty thoughts about Sonny Siaki. Yeah, I guess Siaki. don't yeah. think about him in a sexual way. Yeah, all right. So Sonny Siaki is better than Elvis, and he doesn't need backup dancers, so he gave the other guys the night off. I'm the one, the only... Say it, Goldie. <laughs> Sonny Siaki. <laughs> and then cut from our version. You have, Skylar. The original VHS version has Sonny Siaki saying, Sonny Siaki has left the interview. Sonny has left the interview, yeah. yeah. Full segment length, 27 Sunny Siakis. I mean, seconds. <laughs> uh, my only thought about this, I have to get out of the way right now. Wrestlers do not have the night off. They just don't get paid. Yeah. Sunny Siaki stole money from his teammates. <laughs> Which would be a great, like, oh, heel thing to do if they emphasize. <laughs> but I guess if you're like, well, we don't, we're saving money by not paying those guys. <laughs> like, if you imply any of that, it doesn't doesn't look great for the company. Yeah, that's true. I hated this promo because I don't understand what's happening. Like the direction of Sonny Siaki? Or... Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. 
Why is he a flying Elvis if... If he, if he clearly does not Ooh. want to be a flying Elvis. Yeah. Although, sometimes he does, because he's better than Elvis, so what way to be better than Elvis than to be Elvis? Who's the face and who's the heel? <laughs> of the whole promotion, you mean? Uh, because is... I haven't figured that out, except, well, we like, haven't... Monty Brown, oh, he's a face. Everybody oh. else, I'm not sure. Is Goldie the heel? Of the promo? <laughs> Is she a dick for talking to him? I don't, because she was like, yeah, I'm thinking about that. And he was like, well, don't. She's like, oh, well, I'm sorry. I'm the wrong. I'm in the wrong. Yeah, not that not that I have a problem with it, but I, I want to point out that Goldilocks' character seems to be very sex hungry. Oh, yeah, she's not getting She it. really, she's both simultaneously desperate for dick and disgusted that you would ever imply that. She's only, <laughs> she's only almost getting it from the dumps. But she doesn't want it from the dubs. No, but also, I think she's going to reluctantly bang one of them. <laughs> she's making shirts with them on it. That's what I mean. Like She's getting passionate about she's them. She's going to get drunk and it's going to happen. Like The passion's going to get mixed up. Like it did with me and Matt Stryker. Anyway, segment five. Slash with James Mitchell versus Sonny Siaki. Heel versus heel. Yeah. Yeah, who's the face and who's the heel? It's heel versus heel. Heel versus heel. <laughs> The match starts, and James Mitchell is on commentary, and he lets us know that the box he has in his hands is the Ark of the New Church, which contains the blood of the Odad. That Okay. I was going to say, no. he doesn't call it the Ark of the New Church. He calls it the Ark of the Odad. Oh, does he say that? Yeah. I, I think commentary calls it the Ark of the New Church. Oh, uh, mm. yeah, because he first calls it something else and then says it has... I thought he called it the Ark of the Covenant. I was like, no. <laughs> no. I thought he called it the blood of the all Dad. Well, he... Like, it wasn't like the All-Father. The thing it is, was just he pronounced it... <laughs> uh, he's, he's got a legally, a copyright exempt <laughs> religion. <laughs> no, I don't worship Jesus. I worship Jesus. <laughs> a lot of Z's in there. Our dad, <laughs> who art in heaven... <laughs> So, yeah, what you were saying, I he pronounces the word Audad, but it's really pronounced Audad, because it's, it's, he also spells it wrong. The word is A-O-U-D-A-D, and he spells it A-U-D-A-D, mm. which you can kind of see why he pronounces it wrong that way. Anyway. And then he just tells people to look it up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Which, luckily, I did. I, I did that for you. And then, you. um, what's his face? Ed. Ed Ferrara name drops. He's like, oh, yeah, he's probably just going to go to Google.com. <laughs> you know, that passing phase. <laughs> yeah, just to clarify, uh, an owl dad is a Barbary sheep, which is a, basically a form of wild goat. And presuming, of course, that it is an adult goat that makes it a ram. So it's ram's blood. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's in there. Horns. It's ram's blood. Because as we all know, ram's blood is satanic and evil. Yeah. Unlike yeah. lamb's blood, which is good and holy. Because, of course, the blood of a child is good, and the blood of an adult is bad. Well, yeah, because stem cells. Yo, is yeah. that what Jesus was going for all this time? They're wrong. Stem cells are fine. <laughs> <laughs> so Mitchell explains his philosophy is very simple. Lex talionis, which is Latin for an eye for an eye. Oh. The law of the jungle, which is uh, survival of the fittest or anything goes, basically. And then finally, Might is Right, which is the name of a book from 1896 that promotes amorality, consequentialism, and psychological hedonism. Oh. Yeah, which is basically just do whatever you want until it's not cool to do it anymore. That's Like his socially cool? Uh, yeah, li consequentialism literally is things are as bad as your consequences. So if I kill your kid and you go... What do I do? Then I guess it was good for me to do because nothing happened. Oh, interesting. Yeah. But if I kill his kid and he tries to kill me, oh, I must have made a mistake somewhere. That's <laughs> I, I can see that logic, actually. I'm fine with this logic. Just like that. Brother Skylar's part of the new church. <laughs> How do I write these storylines? So I finally have an awe dad. <laughs> finally <laughs> He left all that time ago to get all cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a speech impediment. <laughs> <laughs> all 
Uh, so Tanae asks if Mitchell's disciples are brainwashed, and Mitchell says it's more like obedience. <laughs> Slash, I just, I personally love this. Slash does a crucifix airplane spin, and he calls it the Slash and Burn. Mm. That made me chuckle. A satanic cult and an airplane spin that amounts to a pun. (laughs) (laughs) So Ed begins to put over Mitchell, and Mitchell just leaves commentary to go stand by the (laughs) ring. Slash puts on a cobra clutch and Siaki tries to break out of it and then Slash turns it into a Russian leg sweep. I just marked for Russian leg sweeps. That's, That's why I mention it. Weird double down where both men go to the top of the rope, struggle with each other, and then they both get crotched. Mm. Which is followed by Slash, who stays on top of the ropes, going for a senton, but he misses it. So it's like a double, double down. Mitchell throws Slash an object and distracts the ref. Slash puts a hood over Siaki's head and gives him a hangman's neckbreaker for the three, and commentary is completely confused about what the symbolism is. <laughs> you just spelt it out for them. I don't understand how they... It would have been worse if they said that. They're what? like, why did he do that? Oh, hangman's neckbreaker. <laughs> they... <laughs> that would have been even worse. Oh, yeah, all right. Because they didn't call it that, right? No, but that's what it was. Yeah, I know, yeah, yeah. so it would have been even worse. Post-match, Mitchell says the blood of the Odad can be used to anoint or desecrate and then marks a devil's pitchfork on Siaki's forehead. So, wh- which one was he going for, then? What is it? What, what is this? It can go either way, like it's aloha. <laughs> <laughs> and I gotta guess what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It depends how pure Sunny Siaki's soul is. Or unpure. Or unpure, depending on which direction you're going. Yeah. yeah. Don Harris enters to make the save and powerbomb Slash, and Malice runs out, but is stopped by Mitchell as the two giants stare down before the new church leaves. Match length, 7 minutes and 30 seconds. Post-match length, 2 minutes and 8 seconds. Full segment length, 11 minutes and 57 seconds. Your thoughts? I don't like heel versus heel. I don't get that. Yeah. Even though the entire time the commentary team was trying to put over Sonny Siaki... They kept trying to, like, yeah, come on, you could do it. Oh, he's so great. They kept trying to put him over, like, very slightly. And I'm like, but I feel like he just had a heel promo. Yeah. yeah. He keeps burying his teammates. Like, how yeah. is this a face at all? How is this someone I want to get behind? He's a real dick. I didn't understand that at all. And then they just buried him. And then I don't understand this idea of we have a new head of security and he's just going to do it himself. Right. Like, you don't hire. I'm not going to hire other guys. I'll just take care of everything. Yeah. Just one guy. I don't, I don't, no, it's not for me. This whole segment was trash. I don't like the idea of like, even though like, yes, it is a former wrestler. I don't like the idea of like head of security comes out and power bombs a a wrestler. Yeah. Yeah. It's a bit much. Yeah. Yeah, Well, we haven't gotten there yet, but apparently you guys are going to be okay with it in Mm. the future. Mm. Segment six, Goldie is wearing a no dups shirt, answering my kayfabe commentary qu- or my, my kayfabe question from last week. What would a dup shirt look like? Yeah. Apparently anti dups. Also, she is backstage with Ricky Steamboat, and she asks if he can even take control of the situation at NWA or at NWA TNA because it's just so crazy. Steamboat says, the rules of our forefathers need to be upheld, and that's why I'm here. Goldie says, why would anyone listen to him when they don't listen to Bob Armstrong? (laughs) And Ricky is disgusted that she would compare the two. Don't even go there, and he leaves. (laughs) Wow. Uh, Not streaming. You did not see this, Delta. Oh. In the, the pure VHS version. Post interview, Bruce follows Steamboat off camera. Oh, yeah. And then commentary puts over Steamboat for being all about law and order. Dun dun. Oh, fuck. I did not write down how long the length of this segment was. Yo, 30 seconds? Two minutes and 15 seconds. Too long. Wow. No. That's not right. That's not even close. Yeah, like, (laughs) it was definitely like what? Like 45 seconds? It was a short promo. I was feeling at most 90 seconds. At most. Okay. Um, I felt like this was the best I've ever seen Goldilocks. This is how she needs to always be. Yeah, true. Yeah, this was a segment where I felt Goldilocks 
had nothing, I had did nothing zero wrong. Problems. Zero problems. Yeah. Yeah. So zero problems. She asked there. a question that was very relevant. Oh, I'm sorry. I had one problem with her. That shirt was dumb. <laughs> <laughs> she's trying to get herself she's, over. She's got her own yeah. angle going. I know. I know. Segment seven. The truth enters and approaches a black cage dancer. Uh, I don't have proof of this, but my heart wants to say the only black cage dancer. Mm. I've never seen one yet. That's what I mean. Segment. Like, I I'll point out I wasn't looking, but also I haven't noticed. Mm. The crowd has a sign that says, the truth is you're my bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And it's classic because uh, you know which word is not spelt right. Mm. Yeah. The truth asks her, the cage dancer, if they have her out here against her will and says they are exposing her for the almighty dollar. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he meant exploiting. The truth continues, this is a freak show. Tell us about the barbaric ways they have treated you. The truth mocks us. <laughs> the way he delivered that line sounded like he was like, oh, I like this line in this movie. Maybe I could base a career <laughs> around it. Like, that line seemed so performed to me. The truth mocks her saying, this is a platform. I'm a dancer. The money's good. He calls her a $2 hoe and says she won't be Destiny's child. Her destiny is a street corner. I, I love when he says that. Don West is like, well, she could be. Oh <laughs> I guess that's who got her on the show, huh? Yeah, apparently. Apparently <laughs> Don West was hoping oh, to get oh, some. What, what was the other joke he said? Oh, and he called her a $2 hoe. And Ed Farrar was like, and here I am with $7 in my pocket. <laughs> Yo. Gosh. All right, all right. Uh, I know. I'm like, they're killing uh, this right now. It doesn't uh, even, like, man. Are, we, are we supposed to feel bad? or? I, yeah. You're making me laugh. So she slaps him. Uh, which is the truth. And the truth goes to take off his belt, but Monty Brown makes the save. He goes to rape her. He goes to what? He goes to rape her. He's like, I'll teach you. And he starts to take off his pants and I, goes into the cage. No, he was going to hang her. No. You, we already established the hanging gimmick. All right, this is getting out of control right now. This, this whole show is bringing down right here. Guns and rape, and it's crazy. When they find the crowd. The truth gets the upper hand and breaks a two by four over Monty Brown's back. And, and well, leaves. He broke it over he? the air. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, it doesn't matter because once again, the crowd is really not into this segment at all. We see all of them too up close. Yeah, they're all just sitting down like Maybe well, some kids are running around. I don't know. Well, I just want to point out to you, at this point we're what, forty five minutes, an hour into the show? Yeah. And there's been one match and then like sixteen promos and segments, one after the other. People just keep coming out and nobody's wrestling. Yeah, that first three or four segments I felt was one long segment. It, oh, it yeah, it, it really... Which could be a good thing, but it wasn't no, in this case. not in this <laughs> case. And then this, this it's not over now, because then after everyone walks to the back, Ricky Steamboat comes out and calls the truth back out yeah. and says that if they is authority, that's Ricky, but if they is skin color, yo, we have a different problem, son. Yeah. The truth says that Ricky is not like them. That let's let's talk about your WWF career, Ricky. People still talk about WrestleMania three, Savage Steamboat, and they may never stop. I think maybe they kind of have at this mm, point. Yeah, you know? not 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 a fault never. So why was the peak of Steamboat's career the IC title? Why didn't he get the world title? The IC title is for second class citizens. Mm. Fifteen years later. 15 years later, and it's the same shiznit. The truth is mad as hell, and he's not going to take it. Ricky has been there, and Ricky can change it now. Steamboat agrees, and he gives Truth a world title shot for next week against Shamrock. Commentary is shocked and says you never know what's going to happen in the NWA TNA. Wait, so who's they? Racism. In... In the context of this storyline, or of this promo, yeah. the WWE slash F. Yeah. Is it? Uh, almost 100%, no? It's white supremacy. They is like the white man in charge. I, yeah, I yeah, couldn't but tell. Keeping... In this promo, it's, he's talking about the WWF being the they. Well, he's ex like he's just comparing... And he's, yeah, he's also saying... His he... situation in NWA, they don't give me a title shot because I'm black, whereas Steamboat never got anywhere outside of IC because... He was. But again, like is this about authority in general, or is this specifically about the WWE? 
Because he's made that question before. Like, how come they didn't hire me? How come mm. the WWE didn't hire me? I thought it was authority until he, like, just dropped second-class citizens. Yeah, he, I, well. I thought it went from, uh, it's authority? Oh, no, it's, it's like, white people. I don't know. Maybe it's that white was just authority. more, like... Like he it was just a play on words. Like it, he didn't mean actual second, like race second class. So he just meant like you know, like jobbers. Oh no! Like the icy, I, icy titles just for second class wrestlers. Job, yeah, you know, like I, those enhancement talent. I took this promo as like Truth was saying, "Nah, dude, like racism." Remember? And Simo was like, "Yeah, wait a minute, hold on." <laughs> yeah, that's the part I didn't understand. He was like, "No, if you're talking about white people, they're not our enemy." And he was like, "No, they are." And he was like. You know what? You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I forgot all about that. <laughs> Wait. And this completely... the fuckers never gave me a, a world title shot. Yeah, you're right. Standing out there in his completely white suit. So he is the white man. You think he was... oh, or is he not? That's what he he's said. Just the... he's like, no. You think you just like them. No, he's proving that he's not like them. I don't know. By giving truth the title shot. Yo, the best part of the promo happens at the end. Which is when commentary says that you never know what's going to happen in the NWA TNA. And neither does the promoter. Yo, and then the truth dances and does a rap in the ring. He just freestyles out of nowhere. It yeah. was great. <laughs> Get ready. Here it is. Here it comes. Oh, you have it? You have... I be kicking drama for you lame-ass rednecks. Nashville, y'all better give me respect. I'm the one. Blow upside your mouth. I don't like none of y'all how you like me now. Good lord. I'll call your name out if you catch me. Y'all want to stretch me. Low lifes want to second guess me. I couldn't 100% tell what this line was, but... Yet demand to arrest me? Mm -hmm. Then you depress me, I'll snatch your ass... Oh, excuse me. When you depress me, I'll snatch your ass up like a wedgie. And he leaves. <laughs> Promo length. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Brawl length, a minute and 15 seconds. Oh Second promo length, six minutes and 30 seconds. I regret not writing down how long the rap went for, but <laughs> full segment length, 11 minutes and seven seconds. Uh, my only thoughts are, I don't even remember what happened during the promo, because that rap was the most surprising and impressive and entertaining <laughs> thing so on the whole good. show! I loved it. Yo, I was shocked. Yeah, no, you... but um, <laughs> James Mitchell should have his eye on Ron the Truth kill Killings, because he just manipulated the hell out yeah. of Ricky the Dragon Steve. Right? Boat. Yeah. Well, you gotta, you gotta watch that guy. I guess something serious is gonna happen if you don't... Is this the first time in wrestling history, before and after... This event, like the only time where a heel goes out and is like, I have a grievance that I need to explain. And management comes out, fine, let's hear your grievance. All right, here it is. Wow, that makes sense. You got it. <laughs> I can't think of any time that's happened. <laughs> like, that never happens. Yeah. And there was no blunder after or anything. No, usually something happens. There, there wasn't even a fine, but it's not going to be next week. It's going to be tonight. Yeah, you have to even... earn it or something. No, yeah, no. Yeah, I, see, that's I don't know, because they're both non-white, but they both work for the WWE, so I don't know what this is about. Why right. doesn't that work for Jeff Jarrett, though? Uh, He's you, a face. You think next week Jeff Jarrett's going to come out and say, Now it's not fair, the white man's been keeping me down. <laughs> white man's a part of this conspiracy, Tennessee Titan. <laughs> I don't know, maybe he'll come out with that rare... That rare argument of like, no, we're we're the Appalachian Hill people, we're blue people, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> and, and we've been discriminated against. Yeah, you know, look up that documentary. All right, segment eight: Malice with James Mitchell versus Apollo. Ooh, Apollo! Yeah, I feel bad because Delta last week said he wanted to see a match with Apollo that wasn't Brian Christopher to see if Apollo was good. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, here we get Malice. <laughs> 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 He doesn't get the uh, best people to work with. Yo, I'm starting to think this is like that, that, um, oh, what's his name? Like, like Tom Phillips or whatever. There was a guy in the WWF, like right before Hogan, who was oh, like, yeah. this is going to be the new guy. He's so good. And they made him have a bunch of matches and they looked back and it turned out, yo, Bret Hart was amazing. And he made <laughs> this guy look like a million bucks. Yeah. <laughs> And I think that's what it's going to be if we go back and watch Apollo's first match. We're going to go, oh, no, it was because the guy he fought was a genius. 
So commentary mentions that Apollo is undefeated and the number two contender in for the NWA title. Yep. And also Malice has his sights on the title. So well, he stole it. Both, yeah. So I, everyone's got to be upset by this. I just, like, I don't understand why Malice left with the title and then you're just like, never mind. Gave it back. Yeah. Just gave it. We asked for him to give it back and the bad guy said, okay, here you go. Malice. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, the only answer I have is that blood is more important than gold. So some NWA must have gave James Mitchell that box full of blood. And he was like, ooh, fair trade. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> the old dad, you say. I, I have frequented a flea market in my time, and I know a deal when I see one. <laughs> yeah, so commentary talks about how everybody is upset that Ron Truth is getting the title shot. And that's what they talk about the whole match. So that's it. Uh, Malice is just in the wrong place the whole match. Every spot, he's yeah. in the wrong place. Outside the ring, Malice and Apollo take turns slamming each other into things, and then Apollo gets busted open on the ring post. Inside, Malice hits a powerbomb, and Tanay claims it's called the stop and drop, but it was a reversal from Apollo's attempted Hurricane Rana. You can't name a reversal. <laughs> <laughs> so superplex by malice only gets a two after he goes for the ref oh excuse me so he goes after the ref and i only mention it because it is the first and only time that we see malice show any sort of in-ring emotion any I sort know. of malice He's literally so boring <laughs> yeah <laughs> <sighs> apollo reverses something into a ddt and gets the three Post-match, Malice is back up and attacks the ref and goes to chokeslam Apollo, but then Don Harris makes the save. Yeah. However, Slash makes the heel save, and then Malice chokeslams Don and the new church mark the devil's fork on Don's head with the blood of the Audad. That's the thing now. See, mm. you can't just have one person doing security. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. <laughs> this is so pointless. Match length, 6 minutes, 34 seconds. Post-match length, Three minutes, eight seconds. Full segment, 11 minutes and seven seconds. Your thoughts? Do you have any? Because I have a lot. Yeah, I mean, I didn't enjoy this match at all. Yeah. But I also want to point out that this match started at the halfway point of the show. So we're halfway through the show on our second match. On a on a wrestling pay-per-view. This isn't... You're not tuning in to Raw. You're not tuning in... This isn't free cable. I just paid $10. I'm an hour in, and I've seen one wrestling match. Yeah. Well, two now, but yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's... And if, if those are your two matches, then once again, they are relying heavily on AJ. Oh, wait. Was that the first match? Maybe that was a different card I'm thinking of. <laughs> he was on commentary. I have... Yes, that's right. He was. Oh, no, was, was that Jerry Lynn on commentary? I forget. That's later. That's later? I, yo, oh, no, Jer wait. No, Jerry, Jerry Lynn was on commentary the first match. Yes. Yeah. So they are oh, on. Yeah, yes, yeah. okay. He was talking about things falling out of his underwear. Cut all that out. Oh, now I should. Oh, wait, no, this is the third <laughs> match. I totally erased the Slash versus Siaki. It all blended together. Oh, yo, this whole... Woo. Man, but that just... It's, it, what a mess this card yeah. is. Yeah. Yo, I got so many thoughts. So many thoughts. Number one, we've already said it. I don't want to see a, a Malice Don Harris program. Not no. interested in that. Don't want it. Get it out of my face. No, thanks. What's it? Oh, it's just a commentary. Like, it's crazy that no matter where you go in wrestling, no matter what company you go into, no matter where, how far back, how far forward, wrestling is the same. No matter how much money or skill you have. Most wrestlers can't carry a match, think they should be a world champion. Other half of the roster doesn't even want to wrestle, is there to boost their second career that they actually like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how it is everywhere you go. Yep. Other thought, right? It is genuinely stupid how good of a song the new church has and then how <laughs> bad every match they have is. I am in such a mood to watch a fight when I hear their song and then the match happens and I'm like, yo, I want to go home and take a nap. <laughs> And then finally, my last thought about this is I would bet crypto coins that the Ark of the New Church is just an incense holder. Oh, a, thou a thousand percent. They yeah. bought this from a head shop. That's what it is. I frequent in a flea market in my time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Honestly, James Mitchell kind of looks like he 
is one of the guys running the flea market stands that sells the incense and swords. Probably. I know he owns a karaoke bar. So, I for some reason, I feel like that's not that far of a step. I, I, yeah, that, that's like, well, his evenings, he runs the karaoke bar, and then, like, earlier in the day, he's at the flea market right. selling his wares. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? I was happy I got to see Rudy Charles, finally. But then he got choke slammed, so he's not going to be here for <laughs> He was here and he was gone, yeah, unfortunately. Good choke slam. Which, which yeah, because he was choke slammed mm. means he's not going to be in the rest of the card. You can't bring a ref, a ref back after being choke slammed. Yeah. We'll see him until next week. Segment nine Don West is in the ring and promises something positive to counter the horrible thing we just saw. The match? No, the show. Uh, the whole show. The whole show. <laughs> we know it's been bad. We'll make yeah. it up to you right now. Out comes Miss TNA, and TNA mentions it's been five weeks since we've seen her. But be- who? Mike TNA, the commentator for the show? No, who's coming out? <laughs> Miss TNA. I don't even have her name written down here. Taylor See? Vaughn. There it exactly. is. Exactly. <laughs> well, don't don't get too excited because before Don can even interview her, Bruce from the Rainbow Express enters. Push. Bruce says he has been inspired by the truth. And wants to be treated equally, although I'm saying that with way much more charisma than he said it. Yeah. <laughs> I've been inspired over the past few weeks. I'm I a wanna, second class. Citizen. I don't want to be treated like a second class. I paid for that. So, put your Miss TNA title on the line, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to fight? Taylor Vaughn pretends like she's gonna give Bruce a blowjob? I don't understand that. (laughs) Everyone was confused in that moment. Yeah. But instead says that she's going to kick his homo ass and then gives him a low blow. So she's under the impression that he's a homo, but she's gonna distract him by going to suck his dick. I guess it was just like a... Because he wants that. Like a, a, let me do something to confuse you. Yeah, he worked. I was confused. (laughs) So, yeah, give him a low blow, and then out comes a ref, and the bell rings. Yo, I guess okay. that makes it official. Sanction- <gasps> Don, Don was just sanctioned this match. <laughs> Taylor Vaughn suplexes Bruce, followed by a scoop slam, some chops, and a clothesline. She's going to win. I, everyone was surprised she was wrestling at all. Mm. Except then the two roll around like a normal women's match, so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if this is a kayfabe question. This is like a behind the scenes question which is i think we all know but just for sake just for the sake of putting it out there delta mm. how much does getting chopped hurt Ooh, i am not a fan yeah i am really not a fan i mean it's it sucks but only for a couple seconds yeah yeah and then and then depending on how heavy-handed the person is well yeah sometimes they might cave your chest in and then there's a bit of pain in the bone afterwards mm. but all right keeping that in mind how much does it hurt to get chopped with nails Oh, Ooh. did she have fake she nails had on his shit? She fake nails on oh, She chopped him a couple of times. Yeah. That's going to hurt. Yeah. He's going to have scratch marks, most likely. So Bruce turns it around and clotheslines and then abdominal stretches. And then. Scoops. Which he wasn't a fan of. He yeah. was like, Ugh, her body's on me. Yeah. It's all squishy. This is gross. <laughs> so then he gives her a scoop slam and then misses a leg drop. And then he's selling his butt. He goes, oh, how often he's been in that position, huh, today? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so Bruce hits a... Old I don't lady know. surprise. What, yeah, but we know what that is. Sit out, oh wheelbarrow. Oh, my God. He destroyed her. <laughs> nowhere. Like, no, but it was like a reverse dominator. Like, Oh, yeah. And he didn't hold back. It was like, yeah, we're doing, like, we're training, doing moves. And then he just slammed her out of nowhere. I will say, like, I'm glad to see... That he just like manhandles her around the ring right, and yeah. mushes her. Thank God that's how the match goes. I didn't want to see like, oh no, she's actually got no. But he should, she should rightfully get mushed by this guy yeah. who's got a hundred pounds of muscle on her. I have never been so confident that he was gonna win after I saw him hit that move. Bro. <laughs> I was like, this is, you're gonna destroy the business. Like I know just recently, fucking MJF did that top rope tombstone pile driver, and Sammy kicked out of it whatever but i was like if she kicks out of this move i i'm not wrestling's destroyed <laughs> <laughs> well yeah no it's she bruce gets the three and is crowned the new miss tna post match 
Bruce cries as he puts on the crown and sash. And commentary wonders if Lenny is proud or jealous. Mm. Promo length, a minute and 58 seconds. Match length, two minutes and nine seconds. Full segment length, four minutes and 34 seconds. My thoughts were, yo, this is 100% the exact type of insane trash I was expecting from TNA. Yep. A gay man wrestling a non-wrestling woman for the crown of Miss TNA, a title which has already been shown to have no company significance. Nope. <laughs> but they're fighting over it. I love it. It's like it's like the fucking uh it's like the FTW title. Why is that thing real? I don't know, but I can't wait to see the match they're yep. going to have. Ricky it's Starks versus Brian Cage for that title. I can't wait. <laughs> Does it mean anything? I don't know. But it's there. <laughs> it's there. Does the winner become the new leader of the group? I don't know. Ooh. I still want to see it. The winner becomes the FTW champion. But what does that mean? It means you get the belt. Oh. <laughs> And it's orange. Ooh. <laughs> oh. oh, that changes everything. It was killing me that the whole time Miss TNA is just fixing her dress. Every shift in the ring, every bump she takes. Yep. Yo, either tape yourself in or don't wear those clothes. Like... Every shift I take. <laughs> All right. Segment 10. Goldilocks wants to interview Loki, but he still does his talking in the ring. <laughs> Non-streaming version, which that's Skylar's version, mm. but Skylar's version. Ed questions what Loki is trying to hide by not talking to Goldie. <laughs> Segment length, 18 seconds. Rightfully cut out that line. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> cut out the whole promo. What, <laughs> yeah. what's, the, what's the point of showing me that Loki has absolutely no charisma. Yes. There's going to be that question then. Oh, no. I wonder what a pro, like, wonder what he would have to no, say. I wonder what's on his mind. No, no now no. we know. We can't. No, no, now no. we've seen it. I do agree that why do it a second time? Yeah. We yeah. already saw that. That's I, K I wise. told you the first time, and I'll tell you again. <laughs> you sound like a white senator. You don't sound like <laughs> <laughs> I did not sleep. <laughs> Loki's a lot deeper. I told you the first. Well, that's that's, that's what he's going for, though. He's like, he's I from told Zimbabwe. You. Yeah, he's like, I told you the first time. I don't like to fight. This is the way. So yeah, I want to call Goldie an idiot for trying to get an interview with him again. Oh, do it. But on the other hand, he did technically say more words this time. So maybe he'll say more words a third time she goes after She it. made progress. She, that's what I mean. She literally, and we saw more of his personality. So as as much as you were like, this is dumb. Yo, she showed us a lot right maybe there. Maybe next time mm -hmm. he'll just kick her in the face, hopefully. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Low-key kick. All right, segment 11. Low-key and, oh, excuse me. Low-key versus Jerry Lynn with AJ Styles. Low-key enters to music that makes me want to point out that low-key does not have any sort of announced Japanese ancestry or relations. He's got that Japanese tattoo. But it's not from a family thing or a girl he loves, or it's just a, he saw it once and he was like, yeah. He paid for it, though. That he may have. <laughs> oh, I don't wrong. have proof of that, yeah. Yeah, he's just a guy that likes the culture. Jerry Lynn enters to Born and Raised in the USA, but it's just the instrumental version. There's no lyrics. What? Yeah. Mm. And that's not even AJ's, because AJ just debuted his theme last week of... I am. You are, you are. I am, I am. Yo, I was thinking about this the other day. Wouldn't it be, like, just a little bit more poetic if his if the lyrics to his song were instead of you are, you are, I am, I am, it was you were, you were, I am, I am. Mm. Oh. That would have been so much more poetic if I would have rewritten that song from 20 years ago. Back in time, if only. So AJ is on commentary. And, you know, I really can't hear him. What a fucking gomer he is. And, and he has no enthusiasm. Yo, and also, he distracts from the match. I watched this match three times. All three times, I forgot he was on commentary. It was awful. Yeah. Tanae asks why AJ was upset at the end of the match. Uh, I think from last week, yeah. And AJ is like, listen, I just wanted to show Jerry Lynn that I could do it by myself. But Jerry Lynn... Did it for us, and I guess I, that, that emotion showed. Showed how frustrated I was that I didn't. 
<laughs> we're all like, okay, I guess so. <laughs> uh, the match is, it's a lot of submission work back and forth. It's mostly Loki is on the up. Loki applies his way of the dragon, which is the dragon sleeper on the ropes. And Ed mentions that it won't win matches, but it will wear down his opponent. And I want to point out that it only works because we're in America and the lack style of discipline where the ref's like, one, you better get off there. <laughs> Two, is this really who you want to be? This is who you want people to think of? And like, this is it? Three, if I get to five, mister, you're going to be in so much trouble. Yo, hearing you do that. Just makes me die for the chance to be special ref somewhere. <laughs> oh, who do you think you are, mister? <laughs> Just holding that move in when I'm counting? <laughs> Yo, I can't wait to ref a whole match as just a... a Midwestern mom there, mister! <laughs> and what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you get yourself down from that top rope there! <laughs> <laughs> One! Don't make me call your father! <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Styles gives the most obvious yet never used piece of advice that I have heard in TNA so far, which is you know, if I was fighting low key, I'd watch out for his kicks. <laughs> no. Yo, yo, but everybody gets kicked in his matches, yeah. so. Including AJ. Yeah. TNA blows every cent they have left and they do a live picture in picture on AJ. <laughs> and AJ puts over Jerry Lynn and says that they're beyond friends. They're like brothers. For the first time ever, the gory special works. Mm. You, and then he almost killed Loki. Yeah. And AJ thought he killed him too. Yeah. It was right in picture in picture. <laughs> I guess that answers my question. I was like, why does he keep doing it? Why? It doesn't work. Oh, that, because when it works, it murders a man. It almost threw him right on top of his skull. It was terrifying. <laughs> We've already talked about this in other episodes, but we get one of these really fucking weird blackout cuts where it cuts out mid-pin. Yeah. And when it comes back, the kickout is long over kicked out. Like, yeah. it's one. And we come back, and they're already half standing up. Like, like, oh. what are these kicks? I get, yeah, you don't have those cuts. This is yeah, just that Robert. Didn't happen to me. That's what I don't know what these are about. We keep talking about them. We say there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing there, and then they give us another cut where you're like, well, who is editing this? Lynn goes for a pile driver, but Loki reverses it into an armbar. Armbar. A series of springboard attacks and kicks lead to a double down. Loki goes for a cartwheel jumping kick to the corner, but Jerry Lynn reverses it into a power bomb. Mm -hmm. Then Lynn reverses the dragon sleeper into a tornado DDT, and it's two and nine tenths. Ah, so close. Loki reverses another pile driver, signals for the key crusher, and AJ's like, I gotta go, I gotta leave, and he leaves commentary. AJ's on the apron. Loki reverses Jerry Lynn's Irish whip and AJ kicks Jerry Lynn and the ref calls for the bell. It's a no contest. Post-match, AJ yells in Jerry Lynn's face as he lays on the mat. Loki makes the save slash gets revenge for the no contest ending. Uh, AJ leaves as commentary questions if everything AJ just told us was a straight up lie. Mm. <laughs> Match length, 14 minutes and 9 seconds. Post-match segment, a minute and 53 seconds. Full segment length, 16 minutes, 8 seconds. Your thoughts? It was a long match. It was a real slow burn of a match that maybe never really quite ignited. Yeah, yeah they were building up a lot. Or at least just going slow because they knew they had the time. And then a lot of the spots I liked... Um, I just love the way Loki works a lot of the time. That one little thing he does, he's got the arm, and then he roll, uh, Jerry Lynn rolls him down on the floor, and then he's going to do like a roll-up, but he doesn't. He just kicks the guy right in the face. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Because yeah. you don't expect that at all. He's like playing off of what you're expecting, and I right. like that. Um, and that reversal he did for Jerry Lynn's uh, pile driver at the end, he's got him set up, 
but he just does a front Cabo kick, like yes, like uh, so Liger, good. and just hits him. I was yeah. like, oh, even that's when AJ Styles was like, oh, I gotta go help him. He's yeah. fucked now. <laughs> I was like, that was cool, yeah. but like the whole overall match, it was just slow. Nah. Yeah, this wasn't enough. Yeah. I'll say, low-key, all of his strikes are fantastic, except the double chops he does are the dumbest the shit in the chops, world. Yeah. yeah. And it's because another guy might pull him off. It's everything else low-key does looks so solid, hits so well, and then he's like, eh, eh. Double, double chop, Mongolian yeah. chop. Mm. Oh, he's not real. Oh, I see it yeah. now. He's not real anymore <laughs> with those chops. And we've already had AJ and, and Jerry Lynn go back and forth yeah. a bunch. And, like, now this is the turn? Like, this is the big yeah, turn? Yeah, and it wasn't even that big of a turn. It was weird because it looked like it was miscommunication at first. And I was like, oh, he just hit the wrong guy. And then he got in the ring and yelled at I was like, oh, he meant to hit him, I guess. Yeah. It, <laughs> like, the, like, it feels like they, mm -hmm. they started the storyline, blew their load way too early by having them fight. Right. And they're like, all right, well, whatever. Let's just keep going with it. Have them fight again next week. Uh, ooh, you know what? Maybe we should try this again. Let's just, they're friends again. Okay, now have AJ turn. It, it's just bad. At this point in the storyline, I really would not be surprised if next week they both came out and they're like, yeah, we worked it out. Yeah. We're friends again. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know what this is. Uh, yeah. Which, which, if they did, would kind of be okay because then it kind of goes along with my comment right that I have right here, which is gas lighter AJ is a strange character. Because that's kind of what he was doing on Comedy Day, just lying. He's like, yeah. oh yeah, we were friends, but yeah, I try to do stuff. I just, he's just like gaslighting people in a way. Like, and they kept asking, like, what, what, what was going on last week? It looked like you were mad. He's like, hey, 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 how about what's going on in that ring right there, huh? Mm. Isn't that something? Whoa, look at that kick. <laughs> yeah, I. Despite the fact, once again, despite the fact that we have a clear-cut ending yeah. in this storyline, I don't know what's happening in no, it. No who's clue. the face and who's the heel? <laughs> yes. I, I mean, AJ sure seems like the heel at this point, but who knows? Uh, yeah. And really, like, if we're talking this time, like, TNA as a company is trying to bring in, I guess, the ROH. Like, hey, you an ROH fan? Yeah, hey, exactly, you used to be yeah. like an ECW. You guys like real wrestling? I want to see AJ versus Lynn. Right. right. I, that's a match I'm dying to see, but they're like, they're clearly uh, like dying to get to it as a company, but I have no idea how to make it make sense. Yeah. 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 And also a no contest. Why? Yeah, I didn't. Why not just the DQ? I guess because they're tag, right? Because if he kicks Jerry Lynn, Jerry Lynn's the winner. But it's his tag partner kicking him. Yeah. That That's what I don't understand. Because that... I was like, oh, it was a mistake because they're tag partners. So he's just interfering. So I'm just going to throw the whole thing out. Oh, but he, uh, yeah. he meant to do it. Yeah. So that was a lot of still. I don't know. It was a care. lot of presumption on the ref's part. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oof. I think it was Scott Armstrong. There was no Slick Johnson, thank goodness. Oh, yeah? I didn't notice him. Mm, if he did, he did a good job. Because I didn't a notice good him. Job. All right. All right, seg 12, Goldie talks to Don Harris, still cleaning the blood off his face from three segments earlier, and <laughs> I didn't write down how many minutes, but let me do a quick scroll up here. It's like 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, my God. <laughs> 20 minutes, he's still cleaning blood off his face. Don refuses to cut a stereotypical wrestling promo and says that he's going to use the system to his advantage by getting a first blood match for next week. Post-segment commentary mentions that also The Truth has a world title match next week. And then on the live pay-per-view only version, Ed speculates if we have seen the last of Styles and Lynn as a team. But they cut that out, so... <laughs> Maybe we do! Uh, full segment length, 37 seconds. Do you guys have thoughts about this? We Since it was 20 minutes, we don't know that that's the same blood. That could just be <laughs> some other blood that he's cleaning off okay. of himself. This don't is know. unrelated blood. He was completely fine. He was like, yeah, I attacked him. Right. He attacked me back. I'm fine. He What? He put a hood on my face? I, I have no problem with the hood being on my face. Seeing as how <laughs> you made that comment, <laughs> and also the fact that he's going to use the system to his advantage. Hey, Delta, did you know that Don Harris may or may not be a Nazi? Wait, for real? Just segment 13! <laughs> Yo, wait, for real? 
<laughs> we'll, we'll talk about it next week for a very specific reason. Oh. <laughs> Segment 13, it's time for jive talking. Please hold it, please. Hang on. <laughs> oh my god, get that chicken out of here. <laughs> Disco is allegedly in talks with replacing Oprah on her show and is also searching for the sexiest, dumbest bitch he can find to be the first ever Miss Jive talking. They don't bleep any of this for some reason. Despite, they review. No, but they were already... They, when. Oh, yeah, that's right. When he was like, put your title on the line, bitch, they bleep that bitch. Mm. They bleeped other bitches. I, like, Probably, what is oh, with the... Weird. Well, when you're referring to a woman, it's different. But it's not, because Miss TNA was called the bitch, and they bleeped oh. that. It's easy! The second Disco Inferno came on the screen for the editor, he just fell asleep. <laughs> <laughs> so Disco says it's TNA, and he's seen a lot of A, but not a lot of T. So Disco introduces a woman who will expose herself on live pay-per-view, a hot, dumb, sexy bitch, Goldilocks. Goldilocks is pissed. You called me dumb. <laughs> that's it. That's it. Yeah. Go, the disc, only problem she had. Disco called her a dumb bitch, and he just meant that she was misunderstood. That's what he says. This whole segment is so bad. I Disco it. asks Goldie about her music, and she says that she sounds like Kid Rock, and she names a couple of the songs that she wrote, and Disco cuts her off, and he's like, all right, that's enough. Now show your tits. Goldie refuses because Disco won't show his balls. They bleep balls. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. I had balls in mine. She screams about women being objectified. <laughs> and, this part. and says, boo to the fans! And goes to leave. Well, she's like, come on, girls. We don't need this, right? And you hear a few girls, yay! And you hear a lot of guys, boo! <laughs> Show those tits, boo! And she's like, All right, well, boo to you. I'm out of here. <laughs> Disco says that her only talent is on her knees, so she slaps him, and Disco chokes Goldie and calls her a dirty slut. She grabs her by the throat! Full I, on ooh. goozles her. Yeah. Set up! Calls her a dirty slut. She kicks him in the balls, and then was like, you didn't even have any balls. Then a giant white woman enormous comes out, and everyone is confused! Not Norman Smiley's wife. No. <laughs> no, no, no. No. She puts a sleeper on Goldie and throws her to the ground and then helps Disco up as the crowd chants Polina. Throws her to the couch. <laughs> yes, yeah, very safely. Easy, yeah. Sorry, not the ground, the couch, yes. Disco says, join us next week as the two leave and Goldie pushes security off of her. Segment length, seven minutes and five seconds with it very clearly being cut on both ends. Uh, my only thoughts are, I don't like any of it. None of it. No. Uh, didn't like a single thing on it. No, 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 no. You guys. Uh, again, like, what? what is... Making this this segment, What what's the goal? Who are we putting over? Why? Okay. Disco Inferno comes out. Hey, we're going to show titties. And the crowd's like, yeah. Yeah, it's... We have girls dancing in cages. The place is called TNA. The crowd is going to go ape shit if you say we're going to have tits. So if you say you're going to have it and then she's saying no... So she's, we don't like her anymore. She's now. the heel. Yeah, and I guess that means Polina is the face, and we're building towards that match. Or maybe Polina's the one that's going to show her tits. Okay, I guess at least we get something. Yeah, trash I hate, it. I hate it all. I Dump know. it. Trash it. The whole thing's garbage. Yeah, I don't know. I had to look this up because I didn't even know how they knew it. But Polina is one of the contestants from like the first Tough Enough. Yeah, they oh. name drop that. Oh, they, oh, it's right. Oh, yeah, said they, that. They yeah, said yeah. that, like, yes. three times. I didn't know how the crowd knew that, though. The crowd was the like, crowd yeah, knew it. Up, they knew it before they were, yeah. The chanting led to the explanation. <laughs> yeah. Trash. Trash, trash, trash. Segment 14, at the commentary desk, Don goes hardcore home shopping oh, network. My, he <laughs> slowly starts to get up. I'm like, oh, my God. Yep. <laughs> Something's happening. He promotes next week's show, an X Division title match, triple threat, Loki versus AJ versus Jerry Lynn. First blood match between Malice and Don Harris. And WA heavyweight title match between The Truth and Ken Shamrock. And then also, the website has hats and t-shirts and stuff. 
My favorite is as he's going off this tangent, he goes, Ricky the Steamboat Dragon. <laughs> and then Ed Frost is in the back, like, eh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. It's close. It it's close. It's it's close. It's close. Yeah. He's, he's doing good. Everything else is great. <laughs> I loved it because, like, after he started standing up, they were, they were, like, looking at him, like, what the fuck's going on? Going. And while he's going, they're like, what else? And what else do we have? Like, and when he was done, him. he got a round of applause. Like, yeah. the crowd was like, whoa, good job. Well, so this makes me wonder, it, are the commentators piped in through oh, the he's arena? Oh, loud. No, I, they are piped in. Oh. They are 100% piped in because when you watch some of the recaps, you can tell. Like, you can hear the echoing of their voice in really? the arena. A hundred percent. Yeah. Oh, actually, I should clarify. I don't actually know if they still are. They were when they had money. Oh, okay. Now that things have changed, I'm not a hundred percent if they still have that. Yeah, I, I only ask because Don West goes on his whole spiel, and then you hear a pop from the crowd, and it's not the people on camera directly behind no, Don it's West. The, it's the arena. It's the arena. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, outside of that rap that I just saw. Hmm? Easily the most entertaining thing on the show was Don West. <laughs> oh yeah, he went for it. So what you're telling me is the most entertaining thing on this wrestling show is uh, rapping mm -hmm. and the commentary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, it is time for the main event, Ugh. which means that it's time for the best hour, our favorite hour, our favorite hour, the Troy McClure hour. Oh, hello there. I'm Troy McClure. You may remember me from such workplace safety videos as If you can cough, you can work. Leg or lunch, a break is a break. Or, doctor, doctor, give me the news! Eight dead in local supermarket explosion. <laughs> Today, we're here to talk about the downside of employer-sponsored healthcare. The supermarket blew up. You don't have it anymore. <laughs> All right. So we've already talked about these guys before. So let's give mm. them the rookie treatment. Let's give them the rookie treatment. Scott Hall began wrestling in 1984 for Jim Crockett's Mid-Atlantic Championship Wrestling under the name Starship Coyote with tag partner Dan Spivey as Starship Eagle under the team name American Starship. Hall eventually made his way to WCW in 1989, where he was given the name Scott Gator Hall, where he poked alligators with sticks and such. <laughs> After the King of the Hill Battle Royal, where everyone came out wearing crowns and wrestled in two rings, Hall took a company hiatus touring internationally before returning to WCW in mid-1991. Now, with the Rick Rude ripoff gimmick, The Diamond Stud, managed by Diamond Dallas Page. I can't even imagine how, but the Diamond Stud teamed up with Abdul the Butcher, Cactus Jack, and Big Van Vader to fight Sting, El Gigante, and the Steiner Brothers in the Chamber of Horror match at Halloween Havoc 1991. Oh my. What? I, I don't know how he got in there. <laughs> and uh, I've broken it up in a way where that's all we're going to talk about for Scott Hall right now. Next, the rookie year of Jeff Jarrett. As stated previously, Jeff Jarrett began wrestling in 1986, April of 1986, as a referee who wrestled to a draw with a wrestler on a losing streak, Tony Falk. The week after that, Jeff Jarrett cut a charisma list promo with Jerry Lawler and Joe LaDuke to promote their blow-off match in the feud against Bill Dundee, Buddy Landau, and Tony Falk. Then, after the promo, Joe and Jeff, Joe LaDuke and Jeff Jarrett, had a tag match against two men with two totally normal names, Abdul Gaddafi and Pat Rose, with Tony Falk in their corner, which ended in DQ when Tony Falk attacked Jeff Jarrett. Week after that, May 3rd, Jeff Jarrett pinned a man who calls himself the Patriot, but probably is not, Del Wilkes. Rest in peace. Also, yeah, also oh, rest man. in peace. He just recently died. May 10th. Jeff Jarrett appeared in a backstage brawl trying to pull apart Dutch Mantel, Jerry Lawler, and the Mod Squad. Sort of going down in his career now. Mm -hmm. He's only just started. So yeah. May 17th, he opened the show with Billy Travis and Uncle Elmer on his team where they fought the Masked Patriot. I guess he changed his name. 
Keith Eric and Blue Demon. It lasted a minute and 20 seconds, and the crowd fucking ate up every second of it. Yo, I wish I could see a match as over as I watched that one match. Holy Wait, shit. The Blue Demon? A Blue Demon. Oh, so it's not the Blue <laughs> Demon. I don't believe it okay. was. I refuse to believe that they had that type of money. Okay. Mm. And then, finally, in the rookie year of Jeff Jarrett, on May 24th, there was a big eight-man tag match with Tony Falk, Abdul Gaddafi, Baron Von Brauner, yeah, Nazi gimmick, and Pat Rose versus Jeff Jarrett, Billy Travis, Paul Diamond, and Pat Tanaka. That ended in a DQ when, yes, Pat Rose jumped off of the top rope. Disqualify that man. Jumped off the top rope. That's against the NWA rules. Apparently. Most rules. It's not the NWA. It's like the CWA. Yeah. Well, most wrestling companies, you couldn't do that. Well, apparently, a guy shocked me. All right. Here we go. Segment 15. Scott Hall versus Jeff Jarrett. Hall attacks Jarrett on the top of the ramp as he comes out, and they fight around the ring to the commentary table, just like... Hall's last match with yeah, Lawler. It's the same oh, match every yeah. time. He's so boring. Then they fight into the backstage area. No proof, but this had to have been pre-taped, right? Like, why fight to the back? Oh, you think so? Well, they lost money. They don't have a live Titantron anymore. The crowd can't see any of this. Yeah, but we established that commentary is piped in. Maybe. It I seems know. pretty, like... Seamless. Seem pretty live to you, yeah? Yeah. yeah. It just seems so weird for them to do that, because the crowd couldn't see any of it. Oh, I'm not saying it made any sense at all. All right. Well, it balances out in a way, because uh, backstage, Jeff Jarrett pushes Jerry Lynn for no reason. Oh, that's the reason they went backstage. Yeah, I know. Because they're like, who do we use? <laughs> uh, and then he throws a jive-talking side table set piece into Hall but it doesn't really phase him, and Hall punches Jarrett back to the top of the ramp and into the crowd, which... The cameras can't follow into the crowd, so I was like, well, at least it's balanced. You know, the crowd can't see some, we can't see some. Good enough, I guess. <laughs> I guess they're brawling. Everyone's upset equally. That's what's important. Jared in control, and he starts to use the stretcher as a weapon, and the ref allows it, despite yep. it not being mentioned at all that it was just any type of special match. Not even like a no DQ match. They didn't even say that. They just let it happen. I, I don't understand what's happening. The crowd, a little bit more confusion here for you. The crowd begins to chant, go, Scott, go, as <laughs> Hall uses the stretcher as a weapon. And then Don shouts, mama mia. <laughs> what? <laughs> I missed that one. Hall hits the outsider's edge, but the truth pulls the ring, or she pulls the ref out of the ring and then hits an axe kick on Hall and then throws Jarrett on top. But then Hall kicks out, and it didn't really matter. Are yeah. they in cahoots? And then Monty Brown comes out and attacks the truth into the crowd. Oh, so that's... And so I that's taken care of now. But then Jerry Lynn, he comes out. Because he got pushed from before. I, I would hope I so, that's why. And he does a, sling, a slingshot splash onto Jarrett, I guess, to get revenge. And again, no, it's only two. Jarrett kicks out. And then AJ Styles comes out and attacks Jerry Lynn. And then AJ Styles goes to the top rope to attack somebody. Why? Someone. Why did he decide to go to the ring? He was gonna go to the ring and attack somebody, but before he can jump, Don Harris knocks him off the top rope. What took him so long? Don Harris. There's <laughs> just so much blood on me. <laughs> Where does it keep coming from? Don, I think you need a therapist. There's no blood on you. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't get clean. It's just all over me. So Don Harris knocks AJ off the top rope, and then Malice and Slash show up and attack Don Harris into another part of the crowd. Then an Irish whip gets reversed, inverted, and both heads collide, and it's a double down. I well, hate it. First of all, we go from a double down into a double down. Yeah, oh uh, yeah. Which is some of the dumbest shit. Second of all, the double headbutt spot, mm. I don't care. It can only be pulled off like one in a thousand times. It okay. looks good. Yeah. Most of the time, it just looks like total dog yeah. shit. I'm, he just wanted to separate from the chaos. Yeah. But it, it was just lazy. This whole match. Yeah, that's Scott Hall. Yeah. Pure laziness. So Hall accidentally hits the ref with a stretcher, 
And then Jarrett drop kicks it into Hall's face. Jarrett gets a chair and Steamboat comes out. Jarrett swings at Steamboat but misses him. It bounces off the ropes into Jarrett's face. No, I guess it does. It was bad. Yeah, it was in, really bad. In theory, it does because yeah. the cameraman followed Steamboat. Yes. Also, I don't think the chair rebounded very well. Like it, it didn't look like it did from what little I could see. Yeah. So Hall grabs the chair from Jarrett. Well, not from just on the ground, but he grabs the chair, and then Steamboat goes in the ring and grabs the chair from Hall to be like, "No, not this way." Yeah. But they've been using the stretcher the whole time. I don't understand what's legal and what isn't. Yeah. I think they said it on commentary. He was like, "Well, if the stretcher's legal, then the chair's legal." Oh, good. Commentary like, doesn't. Know. And he goes, "Oh, so you you know the rules?" He's like, "Well, no, I'm just you know, I'm just saying." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, "Oh, I." God, God. Thanks, commentary. <laughs> Jeff Jarrett hits a stroke on the chair while Steamboat is still, like, holding it in his hands. I thought that was a good spot. I really enjoyed it did. that. It didn't, it, I it, think it could have looked better, but it, it, it was still yeah, good. Yeah, he just pushed it down I with loved his hand. It, yeah. well, it's such a fucking great spot. Right? Wasted in the it, middle yeah. of this. This whole match that yeah. was nothing. Yeah, because Hall didn't bump on it, so it didn't look good and all that stuff. Whatever. So... The stroke gets the three. Steamboat is just in the ring like, no, like spinning around, yeah, like full on so hot upset. dogging. Yeah. Jarrett quickly, very, like panicked quickly, he throws knew. Hall, or goes, gets the stretcher, slams it in the ring, throws Hall on the stretcher, up in the ring, poses right as the pay I, I yeah. saw the timestamp too. I was like, oh, he knows. He's running. He knows. <laughs> yeah. And the pay per view goes off the air with Jarrett on the turnbuckles, yeah. mouthing, it's my damn world. Perfect timing. Perfect, perfect timing. Perfect. Match length 12 minutes and nine seconds. Full segment length 13 minutes and 46 seconds. Yo, what a fucking mess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What a mess. The last, like, 90 seconds was great. And that was it. I Just because I appreciated that he got all his shit in before the time got out. I was like, that's good. And I liked that finish. It was, yeah. But everything else was just boring. Nobody needed to come out. I don't even understand why one person came out. Yeah. I, is the truth in um, Jeff Jarrett working together? They were, and then they weren't. And they didn't they explain are, that. And... But I... they needed to explain Jerry Lynn coming out. But then they explain. They have no explanation of why AJ was going to do something. So why doesn't... even throw the Jerry Lynn thing in there if you're not going to explain everyone? <laughs> well, AJ's only coming out because Jerry Lynn came out. Yeah, but then he immediately was like, "All right, I'm done with this. Now I'm going to go to the ring and jump on someone." Well, that's like, well, if, why? Jer if Jerry's helping that guy, then I hate that guy. Like, is that yeah. what it is? Like, uh... I don't. Uh, no, I don't know. Yeah, I. Yeah, that's that's it. Showing off the air. End of the show. So, belt to 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 belt. 55 minutes and 11 seconds of wrestling on this hour and 52 minute show. They finally didn't do it. Oh, hour 52 and 52. Yeah. They got over this time. It wasn't spot on. How? More wrestling. Well, yeah, there was some long matches on the second half. Yeah, there was like, I think there were two 16 minute matches. There was two 12 minute matches. Like, it was surprising. They loaded this card and with shit. And yeah, it was didn't it pay off. That yo, those are my show thoughts. Pure Russo. Yeah. Pure Russo. I didn't mention it uh at all because I didn't learn it until like a, a few days ago. Jarrett mentioned on the podcast that I did my world with Jeff Jarrett all that stuff. He mentioned on it that the third show was on the third of July. Mm. And then he said he had a, like a, a 4th of July party with everybody uh, for the company. And then he learned about what was going on. Like, uh oh, things aren't mm. going as well as I thought. And then like that next day, he was like, you're in Russo. You're hired. Oh, yeah. Like officially Russo is a writer. He's he's been a writer the last like three it four shows. Like it, so this yeah. is a hundred percent. It was a tight. It started with a title match with two great athletes who had no chemistry together. So it was a weird match. Yeah. AJ like was hurting Elix Skipper. I don't know what if there was something going on there. I remember him laying into it, those clotheslines a lot. Um, and then we had a gun being pulled. Yeah. And then we had Miss America losing her title to a gay man. Mm -hmm. Miss America. We yeah. had a heel versus heel where they, I guess they were trying to get someone else over, but it wasn't working with Sonny Siaki. Uh, yeah, maybe. And then I only remember the second half of the card. We had a, another boring, long X Division max. And oh, the, Apollo and Malice. Oh, I, I forgot that even happened. Uh, yeah. Jive talking, which is a I don't bunch even... of people got covered in blood. 
Yeah, like, there's a lot of blood. And then in between all the matches, you have people just running back and forth, in and out of the ring, interfering, coming out for promos. Oh. Let me attack him during this. But it's just, it's just such a fucking yes. clusterfuck. Yeah. Each segment was somehow crazier than the last. And okay, who's the face of the the company of, right of, now of the show? Who was a face? Jerry Lynn, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That's that's my point. Um, you're, you're First and best answer is a maybe. Maybe yeah. Jerry Lynn. Who's a face? Ken Shamrock, but he wasn't on the show, so. Honestly. That's why they were trying to get Ricky Siaki over. Steamboat. Jarrett is kind of like. Loki? Jarrett, Loki? Jarrett comes out. Yeah, Loki. Loki. Oh, I, I got one. I got one. Face. Loki. Yeah. But I don't like him. Jarrett comes what? out and says he's going to beat up a, a midget to death. And the crowd's like, yeah, woo! And they yeah, love puppet, it. Like. I thought he was coming out for the save, so he was like the face, even though he's always the heel. So I'm like, nobody, so yeah. there's a lot of people acting as the face, but like for the first time. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm tired of being shocked. <laughs> I'm over gasped. <laughs> and then, like, obviously, you know, was this a stretcher match? If it was a stretcher match, they're using the, you know, the, the 1848 stretcher. And God, it fucking killed me. There's a spot you do when you have a chair, where you take the chair, you wedge it in between yeah. the middle and the top rope, and then you give the guy the whip, and then BAM! They slam into the chair, and the chair's stuck between it's the ropes. wedged there, so it really yeah. hits you. It doesn't move. But when you take a, <laughs> a cloth and wood stretcher, and you just lay it gently across the middle rope and whip the other guy into it, it just goes bonk and gets knocked out of the ring. Basically oh. like a rolled up flag. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, no sense. I was like, just lean it up against it. Yeah. Horizontal or vertically. Yeah. Oh, no, we don't want to break it. Yeah. yeah. We still need to roll someone onto it. Yeah. Do they even have a gurney if something bad happens? Or is that what they actually had? Did they find that somewhere? Did some, they buy it? I'm James gonna... Mitchell just has it in the back of his car for um... one of his flea market runs. <laughs> that's, how he, that's how he gets it from his car. Yeah. <laughs> Needs someone to hold the other half of this. He's also the prop manager there. Oh, all right, so why would you make this? Yo, you ever go to open your wallet, and inside the wallet is just a guy telling you that you owe him $2 million? <laughs> I better put on another wrestling show. Yo. <laughs> Try to make some money. Because when, yeah, when that happens, this is apparently how you pick up the pieces. Oh, all right, so if we're trying to save budget, cut the number of wrestlers and just fill the card with the same... Six guys. I guess. I right? Mean, you is, could cut is that... some of them. I mean, like, I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like the crowd is over Scott Hall. Yeah. They're over yeah. every... They didn't yeah. care about anything. A guy pulled out a there. gun and nobody cared. I, I, they pop for low-key. Like, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, low-key, low when he kicks the shit out of someone, they pop for that. And then they pop for the awful, horrible, like, titties! Yeah. Kill a midget! Yeah, they but... pop for Don West. Because put he, Don West yeah. in a match. Because she's the only one talking to them. Yeah. Everyone comes yeah. out and they talk yeah. to the camera and the other wrestler and they ignore the crowd. And the crowd's like, what, what am I here for? Why did I give you money so you could ignore me? Apollo's another face. Even though the crowd didn't care. Yeah. They should have kept Conan and put him with Apollo. They'll figure that out way down the line. Way, way down the line. They'll figure that out. It's just all baffling. Yo... All right, I dare you. I fucking dare you. Guess the card. Okay. okay. What we have on my we have Jared right now. versus Truth. No. No. no I'm thinking well, all right. Well, Truth versus Ken Shamrock, Mr. which Fight. I I am not looking yeah, forward to happening. seeing Ken Shamrock again. I am looking forward to a title change. I think it's just gonna fucking happen. Oh. Get rid of fucking Shamrock. I They've hope. They've been booing Ken Shamrock lately, I and he's that. just. They, they might be all paying right. him too much, it, and he's not getting over, so right. fucking... Hey, if, if that happens, then I'm all for it. All right, next is the first blood match with Malice and Don Harris. Yeah, they and announced nobody, that. Nobody wants to see that, right? We also got the Triple Threat X Division, Loki, Styles, and Lynn. Oh, okay. Is that for the title? Yes. Nice. Okay. Paulina? Is she going to do something? Paulina? I, I don't know if there's enough there, because who's she going to fight? Yeah. Holy Locks? We need more time She'll to She'll probably be there on Jive Talking Show. I would like to see Bruce... Defend Miss TNA okay, yeah. okay. against a D and just mush her. Just just fucking destroy okay. her. I would like to see that. I, I was thinking more of the Miss TNA coronation. Oh. Well, now that I'm thinking about it, 
uh, Monty Brown still didn't get his full revenge on Ron the Truth Killings. Unless that was his revenge on both, and he's yeah, not going to have a match with them. The Truth is fighting Ken Shamrock. Oh. So, yeah, so I know. Gonna so he's going to run it. I, you know, I was just going to oh, okay. say, maybe we'll, we'll have, have Truth him. versus Hall, because Truth was the first one who attacked no. Hall, but no. Truth has a match. Truth, truth so maybe has. it'll be Skipper versus Monty Brown, then. Okay, yeah, we can have that. He'll okay, act like an yeah, actual, all right. actual match for a blow-off. Yeah. And then, like, like, honestly, who of the, like, five different people is Jeff Jarrett going to fight? Like, is it going to be Scott Hall? Is it... Well, now he's is, not... Does, does he want... Oh. oh, actually, he can't get revenge. Or maybe revenge against Jerry Lynn, but he can't get revenge against him because he's not mad. Is, is he going to fight oh, Puppet? No, he's going to fight... Uh, What's his name? Steamboat, isn't he? Steamboat? No, that wasn't that... That that night? Wasn't that that night? Like, let's fight right now? Never mind, it didn't happen. Oh, wow. Well. I think what that's what, what it was, yeah. I'm so no. glad this show really fucking let us know what they're doing with their lives. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, I don't know. All we have is the, the, the three matches they gave us. The triple threat, the first blood, and the heavyweight title. And then the jive talking segment. That's all that we know <sighs> will happen. Stop saying jive talking. That's yeah. it. I don't want to see Dips go Inferno again. No, you, you're you probably going to, though. You're probably going to. I don't want to. No, you're going to, though. But I don't want yeah, to. Yeah, but you are. But I don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I know I can't convince you to, but join us for that. <laughs> Yo, it should be it should be something. I know, I know for a fact. I don't know what it is because I don't remember, but I know for a fact there is something Miss TNA related in the next show. Yay! And then spoiler alerts. I also know for a fact there is something dup related on the next show. Ugh. <laughs> so, yeah, try to join us for that. All right. If you enjoyed this show, consider giving us a like or five star review or sharing us with your friends or painting our faces on a billboard or writing our name on a bullet and shooting one of Whoa, the whoa, no, 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 no. All right, intro music, Falling Off Her Love by Kill Paris. Falling Off Your Love by Kill Paris. Uh, for Brother Skylar, J Delta, I'm Jimmy Time. Please remember that without the mistakes of others, we'd be forced to endure the pain of failure ourselves. Support the arts. The preceding recording is for entertainment purposes only and the views expressed in this podcast do not necessarily represent the views of Why Would You Make This, its owners, employees, or associates.